Welcome to the Critical Coolest. I'm the Monk, and today we're in Wasteland 3, and we are doing. This is a how to get into the um, the Commander's Vault Room. These are this. So we're at Ranger HQ, and Ranger HQ has a couple of secret rooms. You may have seen them. They're impossible to pick lock. The only way to get in is with a special code. The only way to get these codes is actually cooperating with these slavers. Now the thing is, is that I have done a playthrough where I've gone throughout the entire game and there's no other way to get these codes. The only way to get these codes is to cooperate with the slavers. If you kill these slavers, which you can do, it's perfectly, you know, easy enough to do this and don't do the side quest and literally just kill them here there on the spot, you don't get anything good out of it at all. But if you do what she wants and you have to be bad to do it, you get to go into the vault room. Now, she gives you the first one for free. Um, you know, that's whether you kill her or not. Well, you can take the side quest and then she'll give you the first one for free. You don't have to do it. You could then kill her. You know, you are good. You saved the poor girl's life, but you'll never get into the commander's bedroom. You never get those final couple of chests. I believe there are five chests total to get. And the only way you can get them is by getting these codes. So all you have to do is complete this these dialogue options and basically say that you're going to do it. Now, I understand that it's going to be hard for anyone wanting to play this good, but it's definitely worth doing. Um, the second code in particular is 100% worth getting. It's not as good as she says it is. You know, she makes it sound like there are some absolutely gigantic weapons in there. Unfortunately, that isn't so true. But considering you can get and get all of this at level six, um, it's really, really worth it. We are talking right at the first knock into the game. Um, very early on, all these items that we're going to get are all overpowered for our characters right now. Um, so every single piece of it can be used and utilized and really help give you a really good foot for actually playing this game, especially on Supreme Jerk difficulty. You're going to need every piece of uh, help you can get. But unfortunately, this girl likes to talk. And so I'm trying to show you all the dialogue options and everything said. That way you don't see that, you know, there's nothing a foul here. Nothing's wrong. Um, and just so you can see exactly what I then pick. Uh, for my response that way you don't accidentally do something wrong if that makes sense and that way you get a full picture of what's actually happening Gracias, but there we go we got the very first code offer um this can open the very first door but like i said we don't want just the first door we want it all so we need that second code as well um but unfortunately, it does mean being bad. I don't know how that's going to sit with you, you guys. Um, but for me, that's absolutely fine anyway. I don't mind a bad playthrough. So we just got to go into downtown Colorado Springs. And basically, as soon as you enter, she is in and up to the left. You've probably spoken to her before. She talks about her mum quite a lot. Mom? And basically, oh. she is a lost refugee. The only problem with this is... If you're trying to have good with the or being good with the refugees, uh, this isn't going to help. You will get a minus 15 for helping the slavers, um, which is going to impact your, your rating with them massively. Now, they already liked me quite a lot. I've done quite a lot of things to help them um, in my game so far. So for me, it really wasn't that much of an issue. You know, in fact, I ended up having... Um, the good ending even though i made some bad options so you know you can work with it if that's the way you want to go um but yeah like i said i thought i'd do big fair warning there you do get a minus 15 against the refugees which is actually quite a big hit um but yeah anyway so basically you have to lie to her and tell her that her mum is back at hq and that she had sent you to look for her Again, yes, you have to lie, so it is doubling down on the fact that you are actually being bad. 
then you're doing a very bad thing. So, you know, think about that for a moment before you uh, decide to get all those goodies. But I can tell you now that you do get a very, very good helm from this. Uh, it probably is worth doing, um, even if you're trying to be extra good. You know, you can make up for it later in the story now, can't you? Anyway, so she's gone back to Ranger HQ. You don't see what happens. Unfortunately, there is absolutely no way of saving her past this point. So if that was your sneaky little plan, it's not actually going to work, unfortunately. As you can see, this is exactly where she was on the map. If for whatever reason you can't spot her from where I just showed you. Uh, and now all we do is go back to Ranger HQ. And where the slavers were before, they have left an emissary. Uh, we're going to talk to him and then he will give us our very last code uh, for those rooms that we couldn't get into earlier. Perilous sense of regard. There we go. Ah, okay, so it wasn't minus 15, it was minus 10. Well, that's annoying. I thought it was minus 15, but 10's a little bit better, isn't it? But like I said, I was already in a plus with them anyway, so not too bad. And then he just gave us the, the code. So we just walk up straight in, go into Ranger HQ. And it is where the medic office is, actually. It's where you've got a doctor. You just go in. There's some more stairs going down. Uh, so we go in and down there. And then we come up against the very first door that could not be opened before. Cannot be lockpicked whatsoever. Um, I don't think it can be blown up either. You know, it's literally impossible to open. And you put in the first code. And there we go. First one open. And as you see, we have a little chest here on the on the right. And in that chest, we have a PDA utility. That's a plus one to nerd. And we have a complete tank armor set. Now, considering we are level seven or level six at the moment, uh, we're really early into the game. This stuff's actually pretty good. In fact, I'm not sure I have a single character uh, strong enough or with six strength just yet to be able to wear this stuff. Uh, but for me, it's going to be really good in the game. It's definitely a great early set. As you can see, this is a special room. Uh, I will show you how to open that in a minute. You don't actually need the code to open that, however. Um, but the second code will get you this door as well. And behind this door, there are two boxes. So it makes it twice as good and twice as worth getting. I guess that's your reward for being bad. Box on the left gets you the Commandant's Helmet. This is actually one of the best helmets in the game. It gives you an absolutely massive 15% critical hit chance. Uh, it's got some decent armor as well. We also get some power armor legs. So this is really good, especially where we are in the game right now. And the incinerator. Now, I actually have a heavy gun build on me right now. So this is going to be amazing. This is going to be the best uh, flamethrower that I definitely have. So if you're going to have a flamethrower build from the beginning of the game, this may be the flamethrower you're going to want. We have the nuclear knight's helmet. Uh, as a, another helm and we also have the power helmet uh, power armor helmet as well both these helmets are really good uh, they can both be used right right now with the laser turrets and we've also got our first power fist so for anyone trying to do a brawling character um, again this is probably the first power fist you can possibly get in a game um, the earliest chance it's really handy you know like i said you know that's a flamethrower build right there a uh, critical uh, uh, hit for the uh, Commandant's helmet. That can go straight on a sniper. And we've got almost a full power armor set there as well, as well as our tank set. So that's pretty bloody good. Anyway, we're going to leave our people all at that wall really sec for a really sec, um, <laughs> for a quick sec. And we're going to take one guy all the way back to the main computer. Yeah, it's quite a walk apparently. Yeah, so we're going to go back to the main computer. We're going to talk to them and say, basically, we are the commander. We're all allowed to be here. And they open up a secret door into that last room for us. Now, there's not really some amazing stuff there. Like I said, that door, that level two door, that's actually where the good shit is. Um, that's definitely got the best stuff that you're going to find. 
uh, in this little area. But the the officer's room or the commander's quarters is just really good at a little extra piece, really. Now we're going to switch back real quick. As you can see, the doors I've opened. And that's revealing us another room. And there are two boxes in here as well. There's nothing really else in here, unfortunately. You can't do anything else. There's literally no reason to ever even come back to this room, which I think is a bit of a shame. But we got another PDA. Um, really not sure why. We got a blunt weapon, which is actually pretty good, especially for the stage of the game that we're in right now. This is a very good blunt weapon. Um, and then we got a tactical shotgun too, which again, for the stage of the game we're in right now, it doesn't matter what build we're running here. We've got blunt, we've got flamethrower, um, we've got shotgun, and we have got brawling. We've got weapons for them all. It's really good. And again, one more PDA. I don't know why they felt the need to give us two. I've never even used one in the game, and I'm pretty sure we got three out of this whole thing, which is a bit silly. And we got some meds as well. But that is it. This is how to get into the special vault room in the uh, rangers hq i hope this has been helpful if it has been helpful and if you've liked what we've done give us a like if you've got any thoughts or comments about what we have just done here let me know in the comments down below and if you haven't subscribed maybe think about doing so like i said this is really worth it for the commandant's helmet alone this is possibly the best helm in the game works great for snipers and for anything you're trying to get a critical hit on really uh, crit hits in this game are so overpowered and definitely worth having that is why this helmet is so bloody good i just wish there was a full armor piece you know you can get the chest and the legs as well unfortunately i don't think they're in the game but anyway i've been a monk we've been a critical curious and i'll see you guys in the next video